Hey guys, look, I bought an RTX 4060 and I'm really excited. Dude has brass balls posting that on here. Just one good brake check. One of the worst PC products of all time. It's a Canon event. There's nothing we can do. Brass balls. So I snagged an RTX 4060 for a cool $300. Quick public service announcement, I guess. Uh, don't get the 4060. It is simply not worth it. The best thing I can say about it is that it's not as embarrassing as the 4060 Ti. That was pretty bad. I know what they've been saying, but these reviewers, they just don't understand. Nvidia says I need this graphics card to play modern games, and I want all those Fortnite Ws. There we go the Allen Walk 2s, and the ray tracing in Cyberpunk. This is why I was so excited to give Papa NVIDIA my money. Let's go with the 4060. Yeah. This masterpiece in its entirety arrived at my door. Amazon also cared so much as to when they delivered this card to put the damn stickers on the box. I was able to rip off the big one that was here and it did, it did come off clean. And then just leave it like that right at my door so that anyone in the world could know of my masterful purchase. It truly was masterful. So I could not wait to jump on and play some games. I'm gonna be installing the RTX 4060. Oh boy. Alan Wake 2 is a perfect start. It's a modern, demanding game that Nvidia has worked pretty closely with the studio with to make it work well on their GPUs and integrate their technologies into the game. So this should be good. So the 4060 can't do low settings at 1080p in Alan Wake 2. This is 1080p. 1080p. And the ray tracing in Alan Wake 2 was even more incredible. So this is high ray tracing, and uh, you can see we're getting like 20 FPS. Then I hopped over to Cyberpunk because the ray tracing in Alan Wake 2 was so good. What happens if we turn on ray tracing overdrive on the RTX 4060? I am moving my mouse. Whoa. You ready? You, you can watch my hand. You can watch my hand. Okay, I'm gonna move it. That's what we're, that's, that's what we're seeing. <laughs> I was pleased to find that the path tracing at 1440p in Cyberpunk made PowerPoint look smooth. And DLSS is an amazing technology because it gave me 15 to 20 X the FPS I was getting before. And at 1080p, it was so much better. God. And then I tried it at 540p. At least it's running. You know what I mean? At least, at least it's running. What, how much ray tracing could we put on this card? So you're getting a 40 series graphics card. You want to do ray tracing, right? Ray tracing on the 4060 was so good. I turned ray tracing to low and what? Oh, okay. What is happening? Are we at, are we at what I think we're at? So if you want to get a 4060 and play ray tracing low in Cyberpunk, you can get 50 FPS. Wow. Just to remind you, ray tracing low in Cyberpunk is literally only the local shadows in the game. It was at this moment where I began to question everything. Did I just spend $300? on this. I mean, the entire first PC I ever built in 2016 was 350 bucks. And is this graphics card, this singular graphics card, better than an entire PC? Am I going to be put in gamer jail because I lied? I was excited about buying the 4060 earlier. I mean, what I said was so convincing that I might get incriminated for it. There we go. I think it's time we address the negativity that surrounds this graphics card and why it actually might not be that bad. And Reddit, it's gonna come for me, but Reddit, watch out. Ooh. I think it is real ironic that Nvidia says that this 4060 is their cheapest and essential graphics card when they do offer an RTX 3050 for around $220. But that graphics card, it offers so little that they act like the 3050 doesn't exist. What's funny is this RTX 4060 honestly has more in common with the 3050 than it does with any 3060 or any other 60 class graphics card. Oh. What is that? A ripe RTX 3060 waiting for me to compare it to the 4060? Wild, how did that 3060, how did, how did that get there? Across all these games, the 4060 was only about 10 to 15% faster than the 3060. In Cyberpunk, with no ray tracing, 1080p 
it was 10% faster, but honestly both GPUs were more than playable at 78 and 86 average FPS respectively. In PAL World, an Unreal Engine 5 game that doesn't use any ray tracing or lumen or anything like that, the 4060 took a further lead at 16%. Plague Tale Requiem, it was 11% faster. In Remnant 2, it was about 9% difference here. 10 to 15% faster like on paper, it sounds really significant between these two graphics cards, but you know, if we drop the FPS counters, drop the side by side comparisons, I honestly don't think that most people could tell the difference between both of these cards because most of the time they were both absolutely playable. What's funny too is you can buy either of these graphics cards brand new and it's only a 20 dollar difference between them. But you might tell the difference between these cards in a game like Last of Us Part 1. Because if you want to play like ultra settings, even with DLSS quality upscaling at 1440p, the 3060 will actually beat the RTX 4060. Not to mention the 4060 has micro stutters and when you take off the DLSS, it only gets worse for the 4060. So what is this caused by? Well, for some reason, Nvidia dropped the VRAM from on the 4060 from 12 gigabytes that was on the 3060 to 8 gigabytes with this upgrade generational. So any application that likes video memory is really upsetting spaghetti. And one of those applications is like Last of Us Part 1. This affects you, especially if you want to game at 1440p, which uses more VRAM as you go up in resolution. That's why Nvidia actually marketed this as a 1080p graphics card for that specific reason. But it's also very reasonable to expect somebody who's getting a $300 graphics card to want to game at 1440p because there are tons of 1440p monitors that are high quality now be found for less than 250 bucks. I do realize in most of my game testing, it wasn't a major issue having eight gigabytes at 1440, but man, I don't want to buy a brand new graphics card for $300 and have to be tweaking and twiddling with these settings and compromising to make this $300 card work in these games. And this is something that's got me thinking like the 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM is going to age so much better than the 4060. And it feels especially bad with ray tracing because RT, it loves its yummy, yummy VRAM and it eats that stuff up like a frat boy who shotguns beers the night before finals. Just to check it out in Cyberpunk, even just to turn on ray tracing medium, so the preset, here, the, the 4060 looks way more stuttery than the RTX 3060, which has 12 gigabytes. And when you look at the FPS, like average overall, you might be like, oh, it doesn't really matter because neither of these cards were really playable anyways. And that's true, but why are we getting a downgrade with the 4060 compared to the 3060? And the Alan Wake 2 at low settings, at low ray tracing, so the, the lowest ray tracing you can go in the game, at 1080p with DLSS quality upscaling, we still couldn't even achieve 60 FPS on the RTX 4060, and this applies to many other games too. I was honestly hoping with Nvidia's third go at ray tracing with 40 series, that we would be seeing a $300 graphics card that could, you know, do ray tracing at reasonable performance at 1080p, basically bringing ray tracing to the masses, but that's not at all what we're seeing here. It's not only that the 4060 isn't fast enough, but when it is fast enough, it's gimped by the VRAM that's on the card. No winning here. <laughs> However, Nvidia does offer DLSS 3 frame generation on this graphics card. So does the frame generation save it? Let's try it with frame generation here. It does look smoother. It feels a lot more delayed, holy. DLSS performance is a quarter of the pixels that is rendered. And then we're doing half of those pixels that are actually rendered. So we're doing an eighth of what we're seeing is actually at 1080p. It's actually being rendered by the graphics card. Which is impressive to some degree, but man, that FPS countering up there is not real. I mean, frame generation, it, it's cool, but we're definitely approaching that performance level where frame generation, I mean, the lag that it adds to the game is just very noticeable. 
and I had a situation too, especially on mine. It surprisingly wasn't giving me anywhere close to the two times FPS that's kind of advertised theoretically that frame generation could do. And we're looking around around 50% more frames. It got me wondering, is this because the 4060 isn't fast enough to do frame generation compared to the other cards in Nvidia's lineup? Like, let me know if you had a 4060 and you're able to give it a shot. What did you get with it? Because frame generation just wasn't all that impressive on the 4060. But what's funny too is the RTX 3060 which is only getting better and better access to frame generation with FSR 3 is frame generation on the 40 series 4060 here even like exclusive at all does it even matter <laughs> i don't know i mean looking at it here 36 is almost looking like a better deal the next thing that reminds me of the rtx 3050 i see i see the essence in the 4060 here and peep my reaction when i first saw it it looks quite nice it's very tiny though this gpu is so tiny that it can't even stand up on its own look at it it just like <laughs> Sorry. it won't stand on its own it's too short Usually the card has to be long enough to be able to lean on this without hitting the PCIe slot. And it's not long enough. I mean, your graphics card's standing up on its own. It's not exactly a deal breaker or anything. It's just not what you expect when you buy a $300 card. And this isn't even like Zotac's fault. I mean, Zotac may have been the company who gave me this little sheet of paper reminding me that I love gaming. It's those same guys, but it's not their fault that the graphics card is so tiny because this is what Nvidia gives them to work with. And Zotac built and designed a high quality card. It's metal. It looks sharp, but not so sharp it would cut you. And it runs cool and quiet. I don't really have anything to complain about it. It's honestly impressive how small the PCB is on this graphics card that even though the card is so small, like physically, that they're able to do flow through cooling through those little speed holes that are on it. It's, it's impressive what they've designed here. But what I'm saying is it didn't have to be any bigger because Nvidia only gave them a 115 watt card to work with. And for reference, like an RTX 3070 is about 200 watts, or an AMD RX 6600 is about 100 watts. An RTX 3060, what, is about like 160, 170 watts? And this 115 watt power draw, it's probably because the literal size of the 4060, like the physical 8107 chip is small. Like, it's only 159 millimeters squared, where the RTX 3050 and 3060 were actually bigger. Both of these cards were 276 millimeters squared. The GTX 1050, for example, was actually only 135 millimeters squared. So the 3050, it was larger there. It's kind of a bit of a fluke because it was on a bigger chip. But the RTX 4060, it has more in common with the, the 107 class chips that are usually on the 50 class graphics cards than the other 60 class cards that it's claiming to be a part of. And with the small size of these chips, they couldn't take more than 115 watts, guys. In terms of power delivery, what we're looking at here, like, there's like, there's like nothing. There's a few capacitors like here, 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 here. I think this is like a MOSFET or something. And compounded with the measly four memory chips that are on this guy that make the eight gigabytes of VRAM the 4060 has. And the 4060, I mean, it doesn't have to be that big. Ironically, leads me to a positive point, guys. I know, terrible. A positive point for the RTX 4060. But because of the power draw and how small it is, there is actually low profile versions of the 4060, which is absolutely adorable and very, very useful. I almost bought one. There aren't that many low profile graphics cards out there. And for many people, this is all that you can fit in your system. And I feel bad for you, but sometimes it's true. You are getting a lot of performance in a very, very small package here. I really want to emphasize that you are getting good performance with the RTX 4060. And that might sound weird coming from me. I've been dunking on the 4060 this whole video and how it can really not do ray tracing at all, even though it's advertised to be a ray tracing card and isn't even all that good up against its predecessor, the RTX 3060. But when you buy a 4060, 
it's not like you bought a scam or anything. I mean, it's a solid card. It gives you solid performance. And it kind of ties back to that guy on Reddit who posted about getting a 4060. And there's so many comments below that was warning him that he's going to get trashed online for getting a 4060. And then when you actually read through the comments on the post, almost everyone was chill. They're like, well, <laughs> it's not the most phenomenal value but you're probably gonna have fun with your 4060. And that's what my experience has been for real. I've been playing with the 4060 for about a week now. It can run all my favorite games like Risk of Rain 2. It won't be nearly as crazy as last time. <laughs> yeah, I'm proccing Desmark, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, you frog, bro. I think, I think he's what, bro. Oh my it's god, over. two at once is crazy! It's not like stopping me from having fun. And I clowned on the 4060 in Last of Us Part 1, but man, I did all this testing on, on, on a ton of games. That entire clip of me testing games was five and a half hours long. And I swear, because I got caught up playing Last of Us, that th over three hours of it was just playing that game. And it was great. I ended up playing Last of Us Part 1 on high settings in order to reduce the VRAM draw of the game at 1440p with DLSS quality. In the game, it ran great. I was also playing Cyberpunk. Unfortunately, I had to ignore all the ray tracing stuff because it's do too demanding for this card. I basically played at the exact same settings I did in Last of Us Part 1, and I would have had a lot of fun in Cyberpunk. I mean, the performance was fine if it wasn't for this mother that was literally the Dark Souls of 2077. You insta die if he throws a grenade at you. Come on, come on, come on. It hurt, huh? <sighs> it took me way too long to beat this guy, but overall, I had a pretty fun time. And the point is, in a vacuum, and maybe to the average person too, that isn't the PC Master Race bro, I mean, the RTX 4060 here, it's a solid graphics card. And it's genuinely impressive for how power efficient this little guy is for the performance that is putting out. Plus it does give you access to DLSS, which is a really high quality upscale that a lot of other graphics card manufacturers struggle to compete against at, at all. And even though this card isn't that good at ray tracing, the RTX 4060 is a surprisingly good 3D modeling card. Like in Blender, at least from my brief testing with the Blender benchmark, it almost matches a $700 graphics card from AMD, and it doesn't really fall that far behind the other NVIDIA 40 series cards when it comes to like rendering out videos and stuff like that, at least for what I do. The 4060 can be a surprisingly solid productivity graphics card for only $300. However, this card is really spoiled by the VRAM. Like, I don't like when I play games to have to optimize for an eight gigabyte graphics card. And for the average person with this entry level card, which a lot of people will just be average people, might, they might not even know what the is going on when they're playing their games. Like, why is it all stuttery? Why is this happening? Like, a lot of people aren't going to understand that VRAM is a major problem for this guy. And speaking of the average person, this $300 GPU is now the average entry level point. And just think about that. Like, to me, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy the RTX 3050 because, and especially because they recently released that cursed six gigabyte version of the card. You gotta make the leap up to the $300 4060 if you're gonna go in video. For $300, you're still not getting a 1440p graphics card. I mean, you can make it work, but that's rough. And it really should have been called an RTX 4050 and costed like 200 to 250 dollars i mean i know when i pick this card up i don't feel like i just lift it up and i'm holding a 300 dollars graphics card and that's what stings the entry point to pc gaming is this mega lame graphics card then all the competition that surrounds it is also very weak i get it in the overall market like profit margins on these lower end gpus they're not as good so why would these companies prioritize the lower end ones then nvidia at least they already have the most popular gpu in the world the rtx 3060 so why do they need to focus on this entry level point when the 3060 is still holding up today and then the focus for nvidia as a company is AI 
So unless they were able to, you know, just subsidize the entire low end GPU market because they're making so much money with AI, then we're not going to be getting better cards probably for a really long time in the entry level point. Then AMD, I don't know what the f they're doing here. They just typically go a little bit cheaper with their cards, but they're offering about the exact same thing. And we're going to have to wait and see how Intel is going to hold up with this. So I bought this RTX 4060 with my own money. I mean, I didn't get scented or anything. This has been my experience with the RTX 4060. It is a good graphics card. Is the 4060 exciting? No, but you can make it work. Would I hesitate to recommend to new PC game enjoyers to buy the 4060? Yeah, I would hesitate to do that. Is Nvidia's most affordable graphics card even worth getting? Well, I would say no, unless you have no other option at this point. And that's what sucks to see. I hope that things can improve. This has been a pretty fun experience. This is not like a bad card, but it's just not exciting at all. And we need something exciting, especially at the lower end GPU market because things are expensive now, man. <laughs> Let me know if you've got one and what your thoughts have been on the 4060. Are you getting trashed on Reddit? I know. They're fierce out there. Thanks to the homie for letting me borrow his RTX 3060. I may have had to uh, take off the entire cooler and replace that crusty ass soupy thermal paste. I will say that the thermal paste looks kinda not good. It's kinda wet. But after that, it ran great. I really appreciate it. All right, that's been it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one.